Welcome back everyone for another edition of the Kickstarter Weekly. This one is going to be for Kickstarters that are funding from October 11th through the 17th. I've got four for you today, although three of them are actual Kickstarters. One is on GameFound. I'm also going to have two pledge games to talk to you about, and those are games that I personally pledged from the group of games that I highlighted in last week's video. So stick around after the four Kickstarter games if you want to find out which of the games from last week I personally pledged. I'm going to try to blow through this video as quickly as possible though, so without any further ado... Now next on our list is a game called Tiles of the Arabian Nights, except it's on GameFound, it's not on uh, Kickstarter. And this one's going to complete their funding on October the 14th. Now, they had a minimum required funding goal of $17,000. They're currently sitting at $27,000, which is about 1.6 times that minimum required funding goal. This is a game for two to five players. It's going to play in about 20 to 60 minutes. It has a light complexity, and I'm going to set the risk on this one at medium high. Now, Tiles of the Arabian Nights, that sounds very similar to Tales of the Arabian Nights. And that's another game that exists out there. You may have heard of it. Uh, it's sort of a storytelling game where you go around a map and you activate different things and you sort of develop a narrative storytelling adventure. The one thing that I know about Tales of the Arabian Nights, because I haven't actually played it, is that it's very random and there's very little kind of strategy involved in it. You're just kind of going around this map and sort of randomly uncovering events that may be to your advantage, they may not. But much of the fun of that game is supposed to be just in kind of the playing of it and the discovery of the stories, but it's not very tactical or strategic. So this game feels very similar to that. Even though it's by different people, a different publisher, it seems to have much in common with Tales of the Arabian Nights. The difference is that there's a little bit more gameplay in this one, although it's still very, very light. But it's going to give you more to do than just kind of randomly go around uncovering story events. And the difference in that gameplay is that you're going to be kind of flipping tiles, you're going to be doing a set collection and pick up and deliver. So in order to kind of trigger story events similar to the ones that you might trigger in Tales of the Arabian Nights, to trigger those in tiles, you're going to be collecting sets of things and kind of delivering them around the board. There have been multiple editions of uh, Tales of the Arabian Nights out there, but if that's something you've kind of been considering and you've been on the fence with and you haven't bought it yet, you may want to give this campaign a look because I think it is very, very similar to Tales, but there's a little bit more going on with gameplay. Not a lot. It's still a very light game. It just gives you a little bit more to do and a little more kind of agency in the choices that you make. Now, the first designer on this game is named Matthew Potovin, and he's previously designed Drogi Do Rizimu and Titan. The other designer is Olivier Mellison, and he has previously worked on Dominations, Road to Civilization, and Museum. And then there are two artists on this game as well. The first is Joel Drons, who has previously worked on Drogi Do Rizimu and Rallyman Dirt. And the other artist, Amber Scharf, has previously worked on Dominations, Road to Civilization, and Rabbit Island, Explore, Build, Conquer. And finally, the publisher here is Holy Grail Games. They have previously published Dominations, Road to Civilization, Museum, and Rallyman GT. Now, the weird thing here is that there are two pledge levels, really, um, but they're the same price, but one of them gives you something more. Now, one of those is an early bird, so I think maybe initially they intended to close off the early bird much earlier, but it's still open, uh, and it has a bonus thing. So if you're pledging anything, pledge that early bird pledge. So the pledge that you should not pledge is for $45. It's called Storyteller. It's going to include the base game and the Legends of the Sands expansion. So the other pledge is called Early Bird Storyteller. It's also $45. It's going to get you the base game and the Legends of the Sands expansion, the same as the other pledge, but it's also going to include a deluxe wooden token set. So pledge that one by all means. And finally, Holy Grail Games is planning on delivering Tiles of the Arabian Nights in August of 2022. Now remember, that was on GameFound. Now we're going back to Kickstarter for the remaining two games. One Deck Galaxy is going to fund on October the 15th. 
They had a minimum required funding goal of $50,000. They're currently sitting at $179,000, which is 3.5 times that initial required funding goal. Now, One Deck Galaxy is designed for one to two players, and it plays in 30 to 60 minutes. It's a medium light game, and we're going to set the risk on this one at medium high. And this is essentially a cooperative deck builder with some civilization elements to it. Uh, and interestingly enough, it is sort of a reskinning of a game called One Deck Dungeon, which I find that interesting because there is also a game called Star Realms, uh, which was a deck building game, and that game did so well it had a space theme. And then they did a reskin version of Star Realms called Hero Realms. So first they had a space themed version, and then they made a fantasy themed reskin. This one has kind of moved in the opposite direction. So One Deck Dungeon was a fantasy game, and now they're doing One Deck Galaxy, which is a space or science fiction themed reskin. I don't know, I just find it an interesting little thing to take note of. <laughs> now the designer here is Chris Cieslik. He has previously worked on One Deck Dungeon, One Deck Dungeon Forest of Shadows, and Red Seven. And the artist is Alana Servanak, and Alana has previously worked on Innovation, Motenai, One Deck Dungeon, and Red 7. And One Deck Galaxy is being published by Asmati Games, which I believe is Chris Cieslik's company, and they have also published Innovation, Motenai, One Deck Dungeon, and Red 7. Now we're going to talk about four different pledge levels for One Deck Dungeon. The first is for $25.00. It's called Colony Level, and that's going to get you the base game. Now here's the thing though, that base game only plays one to two players. So if you want to be able to play this game with four players, three or four, you're going to want to get the $45 pledge that's called Binary, and that's going to get you two copies of the base game, uh, enough cards and components that you can play the game with up to four players. However, there is another version of the game. Also for $45, you can pledge Starbase Level. And that will get you one copy of the deluxe version of the game, which will have plastic cards and foil discs that will essentially replace some of the cardboard tokens of the retail version of the game. And then there's also a pledge for, for two copies. So if you want two copies of the deluxe game to be able to play the deluxe game with four players, uh, you'll pledge that for $80 at the fleet level. And that will include two deluxe copies of the game. And finally, Asmadi is looking to deliver One Deck Dungeon in May 2022. Our final currently running Kickstarter for this video is called Three Tail. It's going to fund on October the 16th. They had a minimum required funding goal of $35,000. They're currently sitting at $45,000, which is about 1.3 times that initial required funding goal. Now this is a game for one to three players. It's kind of an odd player count. It reminds me a little bit of a recent Kickstarter that delivered called Destinies, and it's similar to Destinies in a lot of ways. However, it's different in that Destinies was a competitive game and this one is cooperative. Sessions are supposed to run about two hours and it looks like the uh, complexity on this one is medium light. And we're going to set the risk on high because this is a first time designer, first time artist, first time publisher, first time Kickstarter. And in essence, it is a cooperative uh, storytelling game with miniatures. Now, the only difference is that in that game, it's competitive. And here it's cooperative. You're going on an adventure together. The designer for Three Tail is Christo Yordanov. The artists are Lilia Ivanova and Mihail Topikov. And this game is being published by Borderia. And again, this is sort of a first time uh, production for everyone involved. You've got three different pledge levels to consider for Three Tail. For $58, you can pledge Three Tail Compact Box, which is essentially a standees only version of the game. If you'd like the miniatures version, then you need to pledge Three Tail Core Box, and that is an $81 pledge. And then the final pledge is for $116. It's called Core Box plus Moon Glow, and so that will include the Moon Glow expansion. And then finally, Borderia is aiming to deliver Three Tail in September of 2022. So that brings us to the end of the currently running Kickstarters. But before I finish, I'd like to quickly talk to you about two other games. These are the two games that I personally pledged from last week's video. So first on the list is Artisans of Splendid Vale. It's just another kind of storytelling game. And these games have just been popping up all over. I mean, we've got Three Tail in this week. 
Uh, but there seems to be one or two of these every week now where you've got this kind of miniatures storytelling game. Sometimes it is a dungeon crawler. It's got combat and stuff like that. But sometimes it's even uh, simpler and it's more about kind of puzzle solving or unearthing story events and just experiencing a narrative tale. And I'm a huge fan of these kinds of games. I mean, there's enough out there that I, I probably need to rethink how many that I'm, I'm buying because these are very popular in Kickstarter right now, but I like them. I like them a lot. And Artisans of Splendid Vale looked really, really good. I guess the thing that sets Artisans apart is that it's very kind of LGBTQ focused. Uh, all of the characters that you can play are LGBTQ. Um, and also I think most or all of them are characters of color. So that's cool, man. I'm, I'm down for it. So it'll be a little bit different than other games. And I always like having different unique characters to play. I don't need the same narrative storytelling experience every time. I want something different each time I play one of these games. So this kind of is assured of being a little bit different than everything else out there. And uh, I'm excited about it just to play it. But again, I also think that these kinds of games are going to fare very, very well uh, on Twitch. And so I did back this in the back of my mind thinking that this is yet another game that we're going to be able to play through on Twitch. It should be a lot of fun to play it that way and have, you know, interactivity with community. So I'm excited about Artisans. Looks really cool. It's also designed by Nikki Valens, who has been around the block and worked on some really, really cool storytelling games, a lot of Arkham Horror stuff. If you're interested in hearing more about Shasin from me, I just published a first impressions video on it. However, I filmed it before I cut my hair, and so my hair looks bad <laughs> that video. It's a little it's a little wild. I think when I recorded that video, I thought to myself, I have to cut my hair before I record everything else. And there was a little bit of a gap until I could get that done. So uh, just m mind the hair. But the video itself, I think, has good information. Uh, I do like Shasin. I think it's a very unique game. It's a political game. Uh, it's kind of focused around elections and voting and area control, and there's gerrymandering in it. And there are five different campaigns in Shasin. There's a Greek campaign, a future campaign, and then uh, 2019 to 2020 uh, India campaign, one for Brexit, and one for the U.S. And the new game, uh, Zadi, which can be played as kind of an expansion to Shasin, or you can buy it as a standalone, but if you pledged it as a standalone, you needed to pledge a little bit higher to get some of the components from the Shasin base game that you won't have unless you already have that base game. But essentially, Azadi is more interested in revolutions than elections, and it's got a modular board, which I think is a little more exciting than the board with Shasin. And I think in some ways, it's kind of the Shasin team going back to the drawing board and making Shasin even better and doing it with a modular board and having some of these kind of like revolution mechanics in the game. So it looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm a bit lukewarm on the Shasin base game. I think it's very unique and I think it's something that a lot of gamers may really love. And I love the production quality of it and the components. I think they're all top notch. Uh, but the gameplay for me, I'm just, I'm very on the fence with Shawson right now. So, but I do think for a lot of gamers, it'll be uh, just kind of an out of the park hit. And, and probably my biggest criticism is just that the games can run very long for what it is. Uh, but I'm looking to hopefully have that experience improved with Azadi when that finally delivers. And when it does, I'll have to decide at that point if I want to keep uh, both games or or what I want to do with it. But there are a lot of good things in Shas and, and there look to be even better things in Azadi. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting it in, taking a look at it, and playing it. So those are the two games that I personally pledged from the last uh, video. I do not have any acquired games this period. I don't have any played games this period. So we're going to end this video with a quick what's coming. Okay, so here is the deal. I am recording this on a Saturday. I am going to try to get it edited tonight. If I don't get it edited tonight, it will be edited and posted tomorrow on Sunday. I am leaving to go out of town this week for a few days, uh, most of the week, for sort of a combination uh, birthday trip for my fiance and 
Well, we're kind of celebrating our anniversary net right now based on when we met. So it's kind of a combined trip for both of those things. That means I'm not going to get to do a lot of work this week. And when I come back, I'm immediately going to be working on the Kickstarter weekly for next week. So I had mentioned previously that I was trying to get a bunch of videos done this past week. I did get that Shots and First Impressions video up. I got a Kickstarter weekly up kind of late from two weeks ago, and then the one from last week, and then the one for this week. And if I have time, I'm going to slip in my August Games of the Month video. However, I think at this point, it is unlikely I will have a chance to do that before I have to leave for my trip. So probably what will happen is I will return at the end of the week, I will quickly get next week's Kickstarter Weekly done, and then I will follow that up with the August Games of the Month video. And then that weekend and the following week, I'll be working to get the uh, Chronicles of Crime 1400 Teach and Review done, and the First Impressions videos for both Kemet Blood and Sand and Embarcadero uh, finished shooting and finished editing and posted. And then, of course, I will have that following week's Kickstarter Weekly to do, as well as probably the September Games of the Month video. Once I get that stuff done, those you know five videos or so in that following week, then I will look at what's next from there, uh, which probably will be focusing on some first impressions for games like Coffee Traders, the Import-Export Definitive Edition, and possibly Grand Austria Hotel, along with uh, the new Let's Waltz expansion. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel or liked the video, please consider doing that right now. And thank you very much for watching. Have a great week, play lots of great games, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.